Hello, everyone. Happy Friday, Alphas. We have an awesome Q&A for you today. But first, everybody, oh, let me move my mouse. Say hello to Amber. Amber. Yeah. Amber's <laughs> back. Everybody has been requesting that Amber come back for, when, when was your last Q&A, Amber? Um, it was around November. I remember it being dark and victory, and I'd been up since four o'clock in the morning. That's right. And what That's time is it now? Pardon? What time is it there now? Uh, it's 5 p.m. ish. Oh, okay. So that's not that bad. No. <laughs> so guys, every, oh, you, lots of hellos in the comments. Let me go ahead and pop into the video so oh, I can okay. mute so it. That's not that. There we go. All right. And then Amber, if you want, if you need to mute your video. Um, I've already done it. Oh, okay. You've already done it. Great. <laughs> All right, guys. So for those who are um, new here, we hang out for the first 10 minutes of every video while we wait for all of our alphas to get online. And I have a little bit of news for you guys as well. In one week, one week, one week, one week, one week, Handmade Alpha Academy is opening and this will be one full year of Handmade Alpha Academy. And I cannot believe that we have done as much as we've done in the last year. We've done public speaking events. We have over 260 students right now. We have alphas who have gotten to quit their jobs. We have alphas who have bought houses. We have alphas who have started families. We have alphas who have hit six figures. We have crazy alphas like Paula Haas who made like $19,000 for Black Friday. So Handmade Alpha Academy will be opening in one week mm -hmm. and it will only be open for 10 days. So if you've been missing out on, yeah. yes, 10 days. And you guys, if you have any questions about Handmade Alpha Academy, we will be giving out lots and lots of information over the next few uh, days. Uh, well, mostly like right before it opens and during the enrollment period, you guys are going to get emails. If you're on the email list, uh, make sure that you sign up for the HAA waiting list down below. There's like a little graduation cap emoji beside that. That way you guys can actually get the big fat discount that we don't talk about publicly because it's so big that, um, yeah, only, only the insiders get to know what it is and how much you guys get off. And I think that that's, uh, I think that's about it. So that will be opening on June 14th. Our dog is having an asthma attack, apparently. And this is live. So craziness. Amber, let's talk about you for a minute. Yes. How, let's talk about, first of all, let's talk about Alpha of the Year for everybody who doesn't know what that is, or maybe they say, oh, once you get into Handmade Alpha Academy, Starla just doesn't give a crap about you. She just sits at her computer and makes YouTube videos all day. What definitely doesn't give a crap. <laughs> what, what is Alpha of the Year? And let's talk about um, how that's impacted you for all of our Alphas who aren't in HAA. Um, so Alpha of the Year was an award. I think the closing date was around December and mm -hmm. you announced the winner January 1st. Yes. Um, November was my first live and it was the first time that I actually felt like I was capable of doing what I'm doing. <laughs> and, um, that video helped me create my entry video. <laughs> Excuse me. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, you had to create an entry video basically saying why you believed you have um, made sure all of the things that were mentioned in Hamid Alpha course were impacted in your website, in your Etsy shop. Like, why were you the most insp inspiring student? And um, I did it and I entered it and it was an awful video. I know it was. No, there, it wasn't. There was, a point, <laughs> there was a point when my video stopped. It, my camera stopped recording because I had filled my phone. I and had to do that part out. <laughs> <laughs> I had to delete over a thousand screenshots just to continue for the rest of the video. Um, um, and, but I'm so glad that I did it um, because I won. And it also gave me the confidence to know that I was the most inspiring student. That's, that's a really nice title to have. <laughs> And what did she win? What did you uh, win? <laughs> so I won a little trophy, which is in the, here in the corner. Uh, I won a DSLR Nikon camera, which I got it here. A load of other bits that I was not expecting, including a tripod, camera case, SD card, extra battery, 
And this um, guy, um, that was all him. I had, was no really, idea, I had no idea. Not. That was the extra stuff. <laughs> he didn't tell me until what, like two weeks ago. I had no idea that he I said, figured she thought I would do that. So. <laughs> <laughs> it arrived and the delivery driver had like, he was covered in boxes. <laughs> and I was like, what on earth have I ordered? <laughs> he was sort of fitting them through the door. And I was like, I don't know what to do with all these. Which one do I open first? <laughs> of course it was the SD card. And I was like, I oh, didn't remember that order in one of these. Congratulations, here's your SD card. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also I got surprised with my little key necklace from the Star Wars. Yeah, and for those who don't know, I make uh, I make keys in my Etsy shop. So Amber got uh, the Alpha of the Year key, the first one ever. <laughs> one of a kind. She never does one of a kind. No, I don't, because it's not real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. Um, let's see. I think when you're both talking at the same time, it's a bit harder to hear. Well, we're oh, trying. Yeah. We're trying not to talk at the we're same time. <laughs> <laughs> We're very excited, guys. There's a there's a pretty long delay even between us, so yeah, it's kind of hard to help. All right, guys, we've got about two minutes, so let me go ahead and uh, close by saying if you guys are interested in joining Handmade Alpha Academy, um, make sure that you join. Sign up for the Handmade Alpha Academy waiting list down below. Click Show More, and you're going to get a bunch of links, including all of Amber's links if you want to check out what she sells, which we'll be talking about more in just a few minutes. If you want to check her out on social media, if you want to check out her Etsy shop, her beautiful website, make sure that you check out those links down below. Join the Handmade Alpha Academy waiting list if you would like to be the very first to know about HAA. Everybody who's on my email list is going to get all of these, you know, these insider knowledge, but I've got like a special little like countdown sequence for the actual waiting list itself. So just make sure that you're signed up somewhere. The waiting list is not going to put you on my actual email list twice. You're not going to get any duplicates from me if you join that. Just that that ensures that in the event that one email fails, you'll get them from a different list. So Amber, it is 1159 where we are. I think that it's uh, good to go ahead and get started. What do you think? Make effort. Perfect. And uh, I know that you said you wanted to see Amy. Um, Good luck. Amy, Amy, I don't think we've ever talked about this. Amy is a scaredy cat and she, we're actually going to put her in some behavioral therapy. We didn't realize. Yeah, she has some like fear and anger issues that we're trying to deal with. that are pretty rough. So we can't like, we can't pick her up. We really can't approach her. She, she'll run back and forth, but she's very anti yeah, You You so. look at her, her tail goes between her legs. She's, she's. Aww. Um, Shayna asked, uh, how do I know if I'm on the waiting list? If you signed up via the link below, you're on the waiting list. And if not, feel free to sign up again. And if you end up getting two emails from me, you'll know that you were already on it. But yeah, yeah just let us know. If you end up getting two emails <laughs> from us, just let us know and we'll take you out there once. Yeah. So anyway, all right, guys, let's go ahead and get started with Amber. First of all, Amber, why don't you tell everybody about what you, I've, I've got Mark's character here. <laughs> Why don't you tell everybody about your shop, your website, what you sell. And yeah, for those who don't already know you, which is probably very few. <laughs> <laughs> and my name is Amber Marie. Um, and I run a business called Amber Marie Biro Portraits. And I do pet portraits uh, in full paint pen, uh, which is called a biro in the UK. Big biro and colored pencils for the softer fur. And I then scan them, every single image that I draw, and they get turned into anything printed, like the gifts, cards, mugs, cushions, tea towels, stickers, even socks, everything. <laughs> and people go a bit nuts knowing that their dog can not only be drawn into a pet portrait, but then it could also be printed onto a huge range of stuff. And when, when they get into my most popular range, which is picture behind me, their dog becomes famous because their dog is in my signature collection. So they go onto the, my website and their dog is front and center and they get so excited. They're like, my dog's famous. It's like their dog turns into the spokes dog. Oh, there's Amy. 
Well, there's Amy's butt. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you get to see. Shiba Inus have very large um, butts. butts. We'll just we'll leave it at that. But anyway, <laughs> so what I really love about your business in particular is, I mean, we have a lot of alphas who do some form of artwork, whether it be painting, sketching, you know, whatever it may be. And they, they say to themselves, okay, I put so much time into this, into this painting and I'm selling this painting or I'm selling this painted necklace or painted, you know, whatever it may be, but it takes me so long. I have to charge so much for this item. And then nobody wants to pay, you know, $50 for a, a hand painted greeting card. How do I scale that? And that's exactly what you've done. So, um, basically what Amber, she, creates an original, which Amber, how much for like an actual commission pet portrait would you charge for the original, like what you did of Bubbers? Um, so that, that size is 150. So Okay. And then, but then what she then does is that completed picture that she's done, she can take it, apply it to cards, apply it to mugs, apply it to <clears throat> coasters. You can see the one of, of Bubbers here. And she can resell that design without having to make physically sit and draw anything. So she's found a way to scale herself in a way that is much more profitable than just sketching the original portrait itself. She can take that portrait that she put all that time into and basically reuse it over and over again. Now, Amber, was there ever a time when you only like sold the portraits themselves, like the hand sketched items? Yes. And what was that like? Um, I felt very much like I was an artist rather than a business owner. Um, I didn't feel like I was successful. I was just a kind of starving artist <laughs> uh, who I didn't talk to anybody all day. I would literally sit there and I would draw the commission because they take about eight to 24 hours, like sat, like no toilet breaks or anything from start to finish. And I wouldn't be doing anything different. And it would be actually really boring um, because there was no variety. It depended on the photo. That was the only thing that was different between orders. Whereas now I can go like, oh, someone's ordered a portrait. Oh, they've also ordered a frame, a name. Then they've ordered a pack of 10 cards. Then they've ordered a pack of 10 birthday cards with the birthday hats added onto it. It's much more fun. And I also think that I can have fun with the products as well. For example, socks. Are so fun to make. I don't make them myself, but knowing that they are made is quite fun compared to just a drawing. I really, I found I was getting bored by the end of the day of because oh, I've got another portrait to do and another one. <laughs> so, so now like a business owner. So you mentioned the hats, and I think that that's a, a lot of alphas ask about add-ons and how they can, you know really add on to the products that they already have. Do you want to talk about how you've kind of created almost, you know, seasonal and, um, you know, just add ons for the portraits that you've already done in the past? Yeah. Um, it started off with, um, a Valentine's cause I had absolutely nothing for Valentine's. I knew that Christmas cards and stuff would sell because I had penguins and polar bears, but they had nothing to do with the people's pets. So instead I went, oh, what could I do for Valentine's Day? That is tasteful, but people would love. And it was a red rose being held between the dog's mouth. And then I would print cards of it. People loved it. Then Mother's Day came around and go, what could I do for this one? How about a yellow rose or a tulip or a daffodil? Then it started getting to Father's Day. Still haven't got Father's Day cracked. I don't know what to do with Father's Day. <laughs> a little necktie. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a tie, I've done a bow tie, I've done a flat cap, like a farmer's flat cap. Yeah. Um, I've done also, there's done a superhero cape and so like not all superheroes wear capes. Mm -hmm. so, none of them I felt like I'd sold 100% of my design. Then it came to Christmas and I did a Santa hat. I did mistletoe hanging so that it would look up. I did reindeer antlers and I did snowflakes. And then I realized I am missing the one event that goes every single year without fail. There is someone's birthday on that day. Someone was born today. Someone was born tomorrow and someone was born <laughs> today. Well, I'm, missing, I'm missing the birthday industry. So I did a party hat 
and a balloon for them to hold in their mouth and a cupcake, which I called the pup cake, in, on a table in front of them. And I did streamers as well to go about the background as well. And uh, yeah, people love them. But nothing has sold more than these ones, which are a row of animals of the same breed with party hats on top. And each one was drawn individually, then put onto Photoshop and then put them all together, remove all the background, add the party hats, and then they got really stupid names. <laughs> they like the fact that they're called stupid names. Like for example, that one is called Whip It Real Good. <laughs> Those are cute. <laughs> <laughs> then, um, I've done Shih Tzu ones, which is called Shits and Giggles. <laughs> uh, I've got all sorts and people love it because it's funny. And uh, that is one of my top tips actually, is just make things fun. Yeah, you're the queen of puns, I've noticed. <laughs> Let me go ahead and show them. So here's the original, but and you still sell this, like don't you in as um you know I've seen it. And then she added, can you guys see? She added the the witch's hat to the original, and this is the actual original mm. that she and we keep it in the plastic. We need to frame it, but yeah, we do. <laughs> we, we keep it, we're so afraid that the animals are going to eat it because they <laughs> will do that. They like to eat paper that we keep it in the plastic to make sure that nothing happens to it. But all right, so we've kind of gotten now off. Oh, I guess I shouldn't do that, should I? No. We got we got off track from like the original, um, the original set of questions yeah. that I said I was gonna That's ask right. you, but everybody, everybody loves it. They're all everybody's super excited and they're all giving you great suggestions for father's day. So you should watch, <laughs> whatever, you should watch the replay and uh, go through some of their comments. Okay. Um, all right. So what was your business like before joining handmade alpha Academy? Like what is it that made you want to join in the first place? Where were you at? And um, you know, for all the alphas out there who feel like, Oh, we're so behind. Like we'll never, we'll never be able to do what Amber's done. What would you tell them? Uh, January last year, I spent most of my nights lying awake thinking, I don't know how I'm going to pay rent this week. I don't know how I'm going to buy food. Every time we went to the grocery shopping, my partner would have to buy it for us. It was hor a horrible, horrible feeling to not feel independent enough that I could go to Tesco or go shopping myself and get our groceries and know that I could pay rent without having to worry about it, plus have extra income that if I wanted to get gifts for someone for the family, I could. And uh, that was January. And then I realized I need to do something that means I'm still doing my business. I don't want to change my idea because this is me. And, and that's one thing that I've really like expressed is that this is me. This is me. My business is me. If I change it, I'm not going to be honoring myself or my personality anymore. So I need to do something that still continues Amber Marie Barrow portraits, but makes it better. And that was how I found you, was talking to a friend saying, I want to start my Etsy shop, but I have no idea where to start. And she said, you should watch Starla Moore on YouTube. So I watched every single video. <laughs> <laughs> I started my Etsy shop, but it, it stayed. I, I had started my Etsy shop years ago, but never really put anything in it. And around March time was when I started to build it. Um, my, my photos were all over the place. My listings, the descriptions didn't really make sense. <laughs> there was no external links anywhere to like MailChimp or anything. So I didn't have a mailing list. Um, there was absolutely no cohesive branding whatsoever. Everything looked completely different. Scrolling down my, my website or my Etsy shop, they could have been different products from different shops. Nobody would have seen that it was the same. And um, yeah, there was also that I didn't do anything from a packaging. I didn't put any inserts in. And you have the best inserts now. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I know other alphas really do as well. Like I, every time I see someone in the alpha group posting theirs, I'm like, oh, I need to up my game. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's actually having the competition, like a healthy competition that there are other people like-minded like me that actually force you to improve rather than you sitting there at the top of your mountain, that actually it's a molehill and you were, you didn't really climb very far at all. Um, I'm looking at other people going, Oh no, I, I should do that. Or, oh no, no, that's a great idea. I should do that. And just continue moving, continue improving. 
that it's not just oh, I've done that now and I can sit back and wait. It's an actual fight to get to the top of the hill. Get and not just get the there, but stay there. Yeah. And it is. Once you get to the top of that mountain, yeah, you, you're great, but there's always going to be another mountain for you to climb. You can't just sit down and go, right, I've done it now. <laughs> because there are Etsy updates. There are legal changes. There's all sorts that have to like, keep you thinking and go, okay, I need to change this. I need to change that. It's not just one quick fix and your, your, your shop is excelling. You have to really keep on top of things. And I really did think that I was maybe stuck in a rut thinking, well, well, I'm still getting sales. That, that doesn't really mean anything. I, did, I wasn't getting my VIPs. I wasn't getting my loyal following. I wasn't getting people wanting to come back because there was a reason for them to come back. Now I have that. And it's a breath of fresh air to read the reviews and go, I can't wait to order my next one. And I'm like, these aren't something that you use and then they're gone. These are things that go up on the wall and there are people, there are customers that have shrines to me. <laughs> Shit, the Amber they post the pictures of like their mantelpiece and their hearth and their fireplace and the whole wall is covered in portraits by me. There we go. That's amazing. That would have never happened without uh, handmade offers because I wouldn't have had the reason for them to come back. So we've got a few um, questions before we get into your steps that I want to go ahead because I just I don't want to lose them because um, <laughs> that's what's because there's so many comments coming in. Um, we have one alpha wants to know um, if your items are if any of them are digital downloads or if you just do the physical products. Um, so uh, before Christmas, I did do digital editions, but now I have joined Architect. My website's not quite have all the listings on it yet but um, i do have their digital editions so they can add a witch's hat or they could add a birthday balloon or whatever and then they can download the image and people save them as their profile pictures and i do them for charity as well so for example during our remembrance sunday i do dogs holding red poppies and people love them they pay uh, the one pound or whatever it is to our british legion and then I send them the image and then they save them as their profile picture. And then it's like my army go out into the world with their little profile pictures. And then you can, oh, who they are. Are. you can you can see who they all are too. You, yeah, can actually, yeah. you can look at that list of people that are all using those images as their, their profile pictures. So um, let's see. Okay. Aisha asks, Amber, have you dealt with copycats stealing your artwork and reproducing without crediting you? Not that I know of. Um, I do have, my, my customers do come back and say, like, I found this shop selling your items. Is this legitimate? And I go, no, 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 they, they're definitely a stockist. But thank you for letting me know. Always giving them the heads up that I would want to know if they did find someone else selling my things. But I think I would reproduce my drawings so fast I mean, during during the day, I would go up to like maybe 10 portraits a day. I do it so fast, they wouldn't be able to keep up. No, and there's no way. And yeah. people know what my stuff is. They look at it and they know that that's me. So and, that, and that's great when you have that cohesive element, you know, similar to what I have with my keys. It's almost like you don't even have to do any of the defensive work for yourself because you have that audience that will just, you know, yeah. when you've got thousands of people who are scouting the internet at all hours of the day, you know, just casually browsing and they see something that looks stolen from you. Those people come to you yeah. with that information and they say, Hey, you know, they're, they're out there trying to defend your case for you and they'll bring it up to you. Hey, I found this. Is this yours? This looks like yours. Do you want me to say something? You know? So <laughs> <laughs> I think that that's a, that's like when you know that you've really hit that point where well, your fans will do that's it. That's like with you. our competition that went out of business. Like we didn't actually, have anything to do with that our fans did that so yeah we can't, we can't reproduce it because they would say like a customer for them would say oh could you do this as a a white schnauzer and they wouldn't be able to do it because they don't have the access to my full portfolio right exactly i can also can draw their dog whereas any copycats wouldn't be able to 
Exactly. And even if they could draw well, it's not, it wouldn't be your style. Right, That's totally you, that is your work. No one can reproduce your work. And if they try to draw something on their own, it's their work. You know, anybody can draw a dog, but nobody can draw a dog like Amber does. So I think that that's what makes it makes it so special. Um, Amber, do you want to go ahead and uh, start giving 10 tips to our alphas that they can adopt, steal, and apply to their own businesses? Yeah, let me find my, uh, my list. <laughs> Get your notes, Amber. Um, <laughs> And then we actually, let's see, Yalissa, who is in HAA, said competitive and wearing bracelet. Oh, you're wearing her bracelet? Yay! <laughs> we're, we're just a big, we're a big group of love and support and purchasing from each other. Um, but Yalissa said competitive encouragement is what we have in HAA, which I completely agree because every time that someone posts, um, for example, who was it that had the really great tissue paper that they had branded with their logo and then everybody went and bought like oh we're just gonna get that and then yeah. everybody went and bought and the tissue was. paper with their own logos on it because one person found it and it, it's just really neat guys it's a really cool environment to be in and it's very different than the handmade alpha facebook community because the community has like over seven thousand members and they're all over the globe and there's a lot of i mean we have great members in the community but then there's also the people who only pop in like every six months and they ask a question and then they never come back to like help anybody else it's just kind of a take 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 when uh, what you know the group's intended for is give and take you know you 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 give help and then you you take help when you need it it's like give a penny leave a penny and with the academy group we're a lot closer because we're all on the same journey. Everybody is experiencing the same challenges and new students coming in. It's like they can ask for help from the older alumni who have been in for a while because those alphas have already been through it and they already know what to expect. And they've already been through all of the struggles and the tears and the, in the stress and, you know, trying to put it all together. So I think that that's what sets everybody apart. But um, Amber, are you, are you ready? I am. All right. So yeah. let's go to tip. Oh, wait, I've got your list too. Where'd it go? There it is. All right. Let's go to tip number one for the alphas while we wait for Mark to come. He's probably checking Taylor. She's <laughs> he's out for the summer. So she's just upstairs playing video games. <laughs> All um, right. So tip number one is that I see a lot of people saying, well, I just can't get people to join my mailing list. It's just not working. They're not seeing my sign up links. It's just not working. So what I have done is every time I receive an Etsy order, I put in my snippet or my swipe file saying, hey, I, I noticed you didn't use your 15% discount code that all of my VIPs get to use. They get to benefit from life. Would you like me to add you to my mailing list manually and I'll refund you the difference? Now, to me, that 41p or something out of the transaction would have been taken off if one of my buddies had joined anyway. So why not add them to the list? It is a bit of a faff admin wise because you have to go in and you have to add them manually and then you have to go back and then you have to issue their refund like personally but that transaction the amount of people that come back and go oh yeah i didn't see the sign up link that would be really great i'd love a refund thank you very much or yes yeah, sign me up every single person is either not read the snippet because they're a guest and they don't know how etsy works or they have replied and said yes and that's no so great. <laughs> and and guys, this is a tip that that I talk about that Renee Christine talks about. This is such a useful tip because nobody's going to nobody's going to reject a refund. Everybody's going to be like, "Yes, you know what? Add me to that list. I will take that little refund." And then, you know, a lot of people might say, "Oh, why would you ref why would you sacrifice that little bit of profit just to put somebody on your email list? But ideally what you want is that 80-20 split where 80% of your sales are coming from 20% of your market, which is those repeat customers that are oh so important. And when you give them that refund and you offer to do that and you make them feel like you know, that they are more important than the money itself because you're offering a refund for such a small exchange, you know, in return for their email address. They feel closer to you as a person. They feel bonded to you. They feel very connected to you. And they put that, that really, you know, strong trust and good faith in you. And from there, you've got that person hooked for life. What do you feel that your repeat customer, um, your repeat customer rate is, Amber? On Etsy, not very much, because once they've ordered on Etsy, they end up 
on my website. Right. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't know what that that ratio is, um, but I would say eighty percent of my customers I recognize their name time and time and time again. That is great. And you guys, you do not need Mark's taking uh, some some cold medicine. He's very sick. <laughs> um, Sorry. I promise he's not over here doing shots of Jack Daniels. <laughs> but <laughs> um, but anyway, guys, yeah. So here's the thing: you don't need an audience of twenty five like thousand people no. who are buying from you all the time. All you need is like a hundred. You know, these are just numbers I'm pulling out of thin air, but you need a smaller group of dedicated customers rather than having this large net that's just trying to catch everybody. I only have, I, I would say with my repeat customers, I have about 50 people who buy from me over and over and over again, but they all together equate to six figures. So that's what's so valuable is having the best customers, not the most customers. Amber, you have a lot of customers though. I do. <laughs> <laughs> you have a whole lot of customers. All right. So tip number one, guys, is to offer to refund in exchange for their email if you have an email list. And if you don't, um, there's a lot of tutorials that you can find on YouTube. I do teach how to do it step by step in Handmade Alpha Academy. And I know that Renee teaches it as well. So um, HAA is a good resource. Handmade Titan is a good resource. Mm -hmm. And you can also just look on YouTube and probably find some pretty useful resources for creating an email list. So Amber, tip number two. Uh, tip number two, how often do you go onto a website and the first thing that you see is sale or clearance and you click on that first before you've even browsed the rest of the website? Always. Every single time. <laughs> even if you only really have a few things, put them on sale because there is a category in your Etsy shop that says sale. You click on that first. The amount of shops I go to, and I'm like, oh, I don't know which category I want to go in. They've got thousands of items. Which what, which category do I click on first? Sale. Every time. I have a zero waste policy this year. This is a new thing. And so I have a lot of seconds. I have cards that were quite like printed a little bit wrong, a little bit blurry. There's a mark on them. They weren't quite folded straight. I put them straight in my sale category because that's the first thing that people are going to click on. And they appear in Etsy sooner as well so because they're almost like an advert. And they also click on, on sale as soon as they arrive on Etsy before even typing anything. They'll click on sale. So have some seconds or clearance or something because they will click on it. So a clearance section, guys, in your shop or website, yeah. either either a, you know, in your menu, if you're working with your own website and having your clearance section or one of your shop sections that are on the left hand navigation of your Etsy shop, having a designated clearance section for and you know guys stick some if you've still got christmas stuff in your shop and it's summer put that Slap it in there put that on sale you know if you've got something that you've been trying to sell for like six months and not a single one is sold put that put that on sale you know the, the, this is all stuff that if it's not moving put it on sale see if it'll move and then once it sells out if you want to try to push it again to see if it does a little bit better post a photo on Facebook that says, wow, all of our, I don't know why this is on your desk. All of our forks <laughs> sold out today. All of our forks, we sold every fork today. You don't have to mention that they were on sale, but say on this date, we're bringing forks back and then do a countdown five days until forks come back. And then, you know, on when forks are finally back, you send out an email, you post, you know, oh, they're finally back. They sold out last time. Hurry up and see if they, you know, sell a little bit better. And if not, maybe don't make forks anymore. So there, there's, there's Starla's. Starla's it, does little, use, yeah. it uses the SEO again because you sell out when you re reuse the listing to sell it again later on. It's using the SEO where you sold out. Yes. So that was a four. Yeah. So, uh, so that's my top tip. That's um, and Google ads. I never really had much luck with Etsy um, adverts, but on Google adverts, the amount of people that would not have bought my cards because they wouldn't have even seen them on Etsy because they don't go on Etsy. They type in Labrador, for example, into Google 
And the first link that comes up is Etsy because it's such a powerhouse. And the amount of people that would never have gone into Etsy to search for a Labrador card, but they found it via Google. That is now my most popular card sold through Google ads. It never sold a single time on Etsy. My yeah. Labrador card sat there for months, not a single sale, not even a single visit, but put Google ads on and I'm paying like 20p a click or something. And that's and tip number, that's tip number three, right? Google, yeah. Google ads guys. And um, Amber, do you pick when when running your Google ads, do you pick products to promote that are already performing well or do you promote the products that aren't performing well? So I did my whole shop. I did my whole shop on Google ads. And um, you can tell because you would leave it for about a week to see which ones were having the most impressions and which ones were having the most revenue because you can click on the the column that you would like to be ascending or descending. And I put it as the least revenue for the most amount of clicks. And it would be that listening I would turn off because I'm spending more than I'm receiving back in clicks. People are clicking and clicking and clicking and getting to it and go, nah, something wrong with that card, not just on Google, that's something wrong with that card for people to not even bother clicking on it. Um, and then there's other cards that you could, you thought, oh, I'm paying a load of money off of this. I'm not getting any revenue on it. I went to past 30 days and actually it was fine. <laughs> it was making a lot of money. I just hadn't clicked the right time frame to have a view of the sales. So don't get disheartened if you're spending more than you're receiving back. It might just take a little bit of time. And then uh, Stephanie asked, we're talking about AdWords, not within promotions on Etsy. So do you mean actual, you don't mean promoted listings. You mean the Google shopping ads, which you can activate mm -hmm. through Etsy, correct? Yes. yes. So Google shopping ads, you got, I think that it's in your marketing and promotions tab on Etsy, I believe. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's that right you- It's right from your dashboard. It's right from your dashboard? Right, right in the bottom. And this is a little tick on, and that's all you have to do. Yeah. Why so, not? Yeah. And it only takes a second, guys. So super duper easy. Um, all right, guys. Let's see. What are we, what tip are we on? Are we on number? F oh, we're on number four. S S yeah. SKUs. And now I'm, <laughs> I'm glad that you brought this up because I get that question a lot. Everybody asks me, what's an uh, SKU? What do I do with my SKU? How can I, how Whatever you want it to be? How can I actually, <laughs> does my SKU matter? Amber, how do you use your SKUs? Um, I use them, so I put AMBP at the beginning of every single one so that it is, I know exactly that it's from my shop. If I'm just being given a, a SKU from anyone's shop, I know that AMBP stands for Amber Marie Biro Portraits, straight off. Then I have, so that's the prefix, that's done. That's on everything. And then I have four letters, which is the first four letters of the breed that it is off. So for example, W-H-I-P, whip, is for a whippet. L-A-B-R is for a Labrador. It, and then once you've got that little rule, it's so easy to create the language. Because you start like, one, two, three. Then I was like, oh no, I've got my long cards now. What do I do for that? So I just put an L in the end. It's so simple. And when it comes to wholesale, when that person gives you a phone call and says, oh, I'd like to order 100 of your cards, please. I would like, and then you go, oh my God, here we go. And she's like, I'd like a black leather door on the armchair facing to the left with a Santa Claus hat. And I'm like, look. But if it's got a skew, you will not believe how easy it is for them to describe which cards they want. And there's no room for ambiguity because that skew is that card. And there have been times when I have sent my wholesalers the wrong card because I haven't understood their descriptions. Amber, can I get the little the little black dog? Um, you know, he kind of looks like this. Yeah, um, he's, got, he's got ears <laughs> like this, and you know, you, you know, you know the, which one I'm talking about, Amber. And he's got the little the nose, the yeah. one with the nose. That's the one that I want, and I want six hundred of them, and I want them tomorrow. Yeah. 
<laughs> Whereas so, they can just pop me an email with the list of the SKUs and I know exactly which card they're talking about. And I also know exactly the quantity of each card as well because they put it next to it. So much easier, guys. Yep. So much, especially when you hit that level where you're scaling. Like if you're just making like, you know, some some bracelets and you, you know, you're making like five of each, it's probably, and you're just starting out, it's probably not going to make or break you to have SKUs in order. But if you are doing things like what Amber's doing, where you've hit that scalability point where you're creating, you know, a, just a mass of products and you have all of these different varieties and variations and add-ons and things, you know, you've, you've scaled up to this level. You almost can't afford not to have SKUs, yep. especially if you're doing whole, wholesale, because otherwise, I mean, there's, like she said, there's going to be room for that ambiguity. It's going to make your life harder. You're going to be sifting through product after product after product, trying to figure out exactly what it is that the customer is talking about. And for your own organization, it's just going to drive you nuts. So and ambiguity is just wasted time. Yeah, yep. exactly. Because then you, it's constant correspondence. They can just give you a list of the product number that they want, and it makes things yeah. so much easier. So, all right, Amber, we are on one, two, three, four. Tip number five. This one's super back to the SKUs do it sooner rather than later because my oh, yeah. job is so much harder now I have to go back through every single design and create a SKU for it and the thing is you can make SKUs um, transfer across domains as well so I've got all of my SKUs are those right ones on Etsy and they're going to be the right ones on my website and they're going to be the right ones in my catalog so that when I do start to have a third party website that could do my stock management I don't need to have the name perfect just by SKU. It will know what I have in inventory so that if one sells on Amazon, then eBay, Etsy, website, Folksy, I don't know, the other website, they'll all drop down by one in stock. And you don't need to mention the name whatsoever because the SKU is exact. That's great. That was tip number four. <laughs> That's amazing. That makes it so much easier. Mm -hmm. um, tip number five was just have fun with your business. You actually will sell more because you will look happier selling them. And that works for online because just the way that you put yourself across online, your descriptive words, you will be happier and you will make it easier to write your copy as well because it would be funny product to begin with. And when you're doing in-person sales as well, it gets a chuckle out of the customer straight away. Like with my cards, whip it real good and <laughs> shenanigans and stuff like that. They People laugh over the phone when they're reading out the names of them. They are laughing. And I go, oh, actually, and I can upsell them as well because they're already in a good mood. So I go, oh, actually, I've got a card that's very similar to that one. It's just come out, not on my website yet but it's called walking all over the world and it's working cockers. It's brilliant. It's my favorite. <laughs> oh shit. Okay. Yeah. Add 10 to the my order then please. Because it, they're in a good mood because you put them in a good mood because you were having fun to begin with. Why not have fun and make someone smile? That's great. Yeah. And I mean, that is industry specific guys. If you make like, I've seen, you know, sellers who make pendants out of grandma's ashes, maybe don't, try to give them puns for names, but oh, most, yeah, maybe don't do that. <laughs> in most industries, you know, just be smart about I mean, it. Unless you've got like a fancy Gothic shop or something, like, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. So make sure that, you know, if, if you know who you are, if you can, if you can't do it, you should, you probably know who you are. You probably know what you sell if you can't like make it fun. But in most cases, and fun doesn't have to mean silly puns, you know, fun could just be your customer service, the way that, you know, you present yeah your, your products when you're marketing and advertising, there are a million ways to be fun with a product that seems, you know, relatively normal. So there's a million ways that you can do it, but you have to find your own form of fun, whether it's funny fun, whether it's just, you know, warm fun, whether it's, you know, little girl's birthday party fun, it doesn't matter. Find your fun or your positivity. And I think that all of those elements are really powerful because people are going to ha form that association with you. Yep. You are going to be whatever you are reflecting out to them and they will in turn reflect that back to you. So it's like a mirror, you know, constant reflection back, whatever you radiate out, they will radiate back to you and they will, they will give you that same level of positivity. So having fun, Amber, 
we have a really, really, uh, a really, really good one for tip number six. Yes. And, but, but before we do that, we did have uh, one Sub, subbed for the grandma joke. <laughs> one alpha. <laughs> Thank you. One alpha said, uh, "I missed that. What software do you use for inventory tracking?" And there are loads. There are loads. You just need to type in inventory stock tracker into Google, and you'll see one that maybe integrates with your website. I would start off with trying to find one that works hand in hand with what sites you use. For example, there will be a WordPress plugin probably that you would be able to go across with all of your sites. Um, yeah. Just Google it. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty it's it's a pretty basic thing. So if you have a website, you should be able to find it in the WordPress plugin. Yeah, just find one that actually works for you, so you don't have to spend yeah. a lot of time working around and fixing things and yeah. getting stuff to work. Just exactly. do it. Just spend like an hour searching. This. And paying for the service, then realizing it's not compatible with your website, you don't want to do that. <laughs> Reach out to customer service for the plugin first. That's what we, before we put anything on our oh, yeah. academy website, we reach out to the service and we're like, "Hey, is this going to destroy our website?" Because we've done that right. That, before, that way, if it does, they're responsible for it. Yeah, before, <laughs> right before we launched Handmade Alpha Academy, we installed an update to a plugin, just not even thinking about it. It broke the whole site like less than a week before launch. Yeah, it was that, that <laughs> it was, was that was madness that nobody saw. We didn't tell anybody about that. But I was literally just I was pacing, just yelling. I was so yeah. Mad. I spent I spent a whole week fixing it. Yeah, it was, rough. <laughs> it was rough. But all right, so. Tip number six, Amber, this is one that I know that they're going to, to love, especially when it comes to, um, especially, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll just let you. Tip number six, I'm not going to try to explain it. It is a marathon, not a sprint. The amount of people saying, like, right, I've changed this, 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 I've changed this. Now wait, now I'm going to wait for the, the things to happen. Now I'm going to wait for the improvements. You don't know what worked and what didn't because you did everything at the same time. Do one tweak, wait a week and see if it improves. If it if it does improve, then you go, right, that was a positive thing for my shop. Let's go do it for another thing. Why are you changing all of your SEO for your website and for your business and then realizing, oh no, I've really messed things up now because I removed all of the positive SEO because I didn't really research it and wait for things to actually function. SEO doesn't work immediately. It takes about a week to work. Even longer, sometimes, sometimes longer, 60, yeah, a week to 60 days. Yeah, it just be patient because sometimes, for example, there, for, if you've got a food allergy, you don't stop eating everything. You do process of elimination. You work out what you're allergic to. You remove milk. The problem is still there. Okay, so it's not milk. You remove chicken. And you think, maybe I'm allergic to, to bird. Oh, no, the problem is still there. So it's not that. You need to work out what's going wrong or what's going right for you to be successful. Otherwise, you could be successful and you have no idea how you did it. Just as like, you could be really unsuccessful. And the only reason is you, did, you forgot that one long tail keyword that you removed back in 2016 because you thought you were being really clever. Patience. <laughs> yes. And for SEO guys, go with, um, I think you can only do it with eRank Pro, but eRank.com, for, formerly Etsy Rank, pop into the change tracker and monitor a few of your listings that you plan to tweak yeah. and update. What it's going to do is take a daily snapshot of those listings, how many views, favorites, and sales that listing has received. And if you go in and tweak your SEO, it'll show you a record of wh what you took out, what you added in, and the results that came from that. And if you take out a good keyword on a listing and it ends up like tanking your sales, you can see exactly what word you took out so you can put it back. Oops. Or or if you add a great keyword in and you see that, oh, my views, favorites and sales, you know, increased, you can go back in and you can add that keyword into other listings and start applying everything gradually. But you have to give everything time to set in. And you can't just make changes and say, okay, let's go. Where's the sales? Like you have to give it time. Yeah, and yeah, sure. and if you're an impatient person, I, I'm sorry, you're just gonna have to get over it because that is not how SEO works. You can't be impatient. And if you are so impatient that you just don't know what to do with the rest of your time, 
work on marketing, work on social media presence, talk to some customers, build, you know, build your email list, read a book that's going to change how you, how you market. I have hundreds of videos that you could be watching. You know, I have an entire library in the handmade alpha Facebook community, start networking with alphas in the free Facebook community. All of these resources are free, you know, and for all of our alphas who say, I don't have money for HAA, so I can't do anything right now. Yes, you can. There are 90% of the content that we produce is free. I, I Entirely literally, free. I give you guys, you know, all of the resources that, that you need to occupy your time you, regardless. So don't, there are no excuses starting today. Every single one of you is going to spend your summer or whatever season it is, wherever you live, you are going to spend the next three months buckling down and getting ready for the holidays. Cause it's about to get crazy. Amber, it'll, it'll come before you know it. Are you ready for the next tip? Now that I'm, I'm ranting. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are a lot of people say, I just don't have time. I, I just don't have time. Hire someone. It doesn't yeah. have to be an assistant. It can be a cleaner. It can be someone who comes around and cleans your windows. It can be anyone that is professional at what they do. They will do in a heartbeat what you get a headache over. They will come in. They know exactly what to do. I have someone come in to clean my oven. 50 pound. Don't ever have to touch it because they just <laughs> clean it. They take all the dirty water away and then they leave. And then they make a repeat booking for the next year when they want to come and clean their oven again. I don't have to do it. And that means that I can spend more time on my shop. I have a window cleaner, a cleaner, an accountant, a printer, a supplier, and an assistant. I mean, I am at the latter end of maybe hiring help <laughs> if I'm having a team. Um, but I have people that come in and do something that I myself don't enjoy. I'm not very good at it. If I could hire a chef, I would. And I bet you could. <laughs> Get one of those meal delivery services yeah. where they, they take the guesswork out of it. All you have to do is cook it. Like that's HelloFresh. Dude, a and personal chef that? sounds pretty legit. Oh, man. I wish really <laughs> we could get one. <laughs> yeah. We uh, we hire out our lawn service. We pay. We only pay $50 a month. Or no, I'm sorry, a week. $50 a month. <laughs> $50 a week. For lawn service. He lives in our shed. He lives in our <laughs> shed. So, <laughs> we have an old, we have a nice old man who comes and does our landscaping. We have a guy coming today. One of my friends is coming to do our gardens for us. Mm -hmm. And we have Nate. I'm not going to tell you how much we paid Nate, but it, it's, it's a <laughs> amount. So, you know, and we just now hired Nate. So we understand that it, it's hard to pay, but here's the thing. And I, I, I like to use this term. You're either money poor and time rich or time wait money poor and time rich or time poor time money. poor and money rich and once you hit time poor and money rich it's not that big a deal to give some of the money that you have no. to start paying off little tasks here and there because what then happens is you become more productive you're able to do more of the things that's going to generate more cash flow and then you're going to be able to hire out more things so you start with hiring out one little thing and if you don't have money to invest in that one little thing trade products trade you know do a kids swap if you've got kids trade trade you know a babysitting swap with with the neighbor girl down the street who also has a kid. There's a million ways that you can kind of, I mean, Anything. humans like are, are, we are wired to trade and barter. That is how we have developed. And it's through these trades and these transactions that we've created that we are human because we are the only species who does this, where we have these transactions, where we, where we hold each other accountable. We have, you know, things other than currency that we can trade to create, you know, more time and to create expertise. If not for the ability to trade, there would be no expertise. So there is a lot of power in trade. You're wired to do it. You just have to start doing it. And there so, are plenty of people out there that'll do things relatively cheap. If, you yeah. got, if you've got a cousin that's in college that needs just some extra ramen noodle money, pay him 50 bucks to mow your grass. You yeah. Know? The guy that I have coming today, he, he, you it's know, just a friend from like school. Yeah. He posted that he was looking for some like summer, summer outdoor work. And I'm, yeah, I've got so much summer outdoor work for you. So, <laughs> you know, just give yourself more time and make sure that the time that you do have, that you're not wasting it on silly things like scrolling through Facebook, yep. you know, uh, watching. I mean, if you want to watch like a couple episodes of something on Netflix, that's cool, but don't do it all day. Yep. You, you know, give yourself time to treat this like a job basically. So I also it, said that like being self-employed is so hard. 
you have so many different hats that you have to put on. You're the marketing team, and then you're the social media team, and then you're the packaging and producer. Then you're printing. Then you're doing the sales. Then you're the manager. Then you're the cleaner because you've got to clean your studio up. Why not hand one of those hats to someone else and just go, this is your job now. I now have whatever time it would have took me to do that job. You will do it faster and better because you're a professional. And I can use that time to do something else. And it relieves that stress because the amount of time, I don't, don't want to clean. I don't. That's not my fun thing. I do want to spend more time on my business, though. So why not pay my cleaner? And my cleaner came in at Christmas time when I was really burnt out. And she said, she said, just quick, are you all right? And I burst into tears. And I was no. No, I'm not. I, 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 I've got so much to do. I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this. Uh, and she, went, she put down the vacuum cleaner. What do you need me to do? And she came in and she packed cards for the rest of the time that she was supposed to do my cleaning. And now she's my part-time assistant and she comes in every Wednesday. That one little transaction of me saying, oh, I need to hand off my cleaning, actually turned into someone coming in and doing it every Wednesday. And I'm helping her out as well because... I'm paying her a little bit less than she would be cleaning, but the amount of chemicals she was using to clean was giving her asthma and arthritis because she was scrubbing. Oh, so no. for the best days, it's her day off because she doesn't have to clean. And she probably enjoys it. It's probably she does. That's great. And she and buys my stuff as well. She's walking out the door. She goes, oh, it's so-and-so's birthday this week. Can I have a whip it card? And then she'll give me £2.50 and then we'll like, Thank you. That's so great. And that's like, that, I mean, that's like having like a bonus friend. Almost, yeah. you know? That's that's like your helper and also your bonus friend. Lindsay, um, who's also at Handmade Alpha Academy student, she said aphids trade their sticky secretions with ants for protection. You just reminded <laughs> me. Aphid made me feel dirty. Secretions. Yeah, I don't like that combination of words. I feel dirty now, thanks. <laughs> uh, but it's true. Um, all right, so your guys' next tip is to hire or barter for help. Guys, get get yourself some help. Get some help, guys. Do you guys, have you guys ever seen the Michael Jackson or not Michael Jackson? Michael Jordan. Michael Jackson. Michael Jordan. Um, My com favorite basket commercial player. that he did for McDonald's where he goes. Stop it. Get, get some, some help. Get some help. What was he even promoting? I have no idea. I can't remember. He just goes. Stop it. Get some help. And I. <laughs> That all the time you guys got to google it after the q a michael jordan stop it get some help and it'll make you laugh amber are you ready for your next <laughs> yeah tip? all right um, perfect. think of a problem it's maybe someone that you've noticed in your particular niche time and time again for example mr amber marie hates writing cards writing greeting cards his handwriting is awful it's like a child and he <laughs> is so self-conscious of it that he asks me to write every single one of his cards. And I thought, do you know what? I sell cards. Why isn't anybody else doing handwritten greeting cards? So I put it as a, a listing variant and think, well, you could have this card, but for a pound extra, I will hand write your gift note into the card really nice in calligraphy for a pound. The amount of men that are now purchasing my cards <laughs> because they don't want to write it is amazing. And the amount of people that also want to send their card directly because they said, oh no, I've forgotten her birthday. There's no time for me to order a card to get here to then be sent back to my friend. Could you send it directly? Yeah, of course. And I'll write a handwritten note inside the card in gold, in calligraphy. And I thought, well, there are two big card manufacturers that people order on a late, no late notice, and that's Moonpig and Funky Pigeon. Both of them print their gift messages. There is no handwritten gift message service. It's gold mine. And it only takes you a second. Yeah. I've got the card in front of me. It's open already. Why not write it? That's so great. <laughs> and, you and, and further to that, because this is my second part of this one, is that the amount of people, how often do you get your card and you get around ready to write it? What on earth do I write? What do I write? 
uh, to Starla. Happy birthday. Love Amber and Scott. Yes. That's the game, the categorically, that's what you're going to write in your card because you don't know what to write. So I've created, it's not launched yet, but I've created a Pinterest worthy card message suggestions for people to click on and then go, I want that one. I want this one. They can fill in the blanks for the names and the he or the she or whatever. But it's going to be something that I'm going to put up onto Pinterest. People can share it. They can use it. It's completely free. Why not create something that is free content that draws people back to your website, draws people back to Etsy? They're scrolling through Pinterest because they're looking for things to write on it, on their card and they go, oh, we'll click on that. Oh, it's the listing for a card. May as well buy that card as well. Or I'll have a look in the rest of her shop and see what else she does. There's so many backlinks back to my website now that people come across it without even looking specifically for a card. And they get a suggestion for what to write in their cards. Whether they buy my card or not, they remember that, oh, I know that lady had an image with loads of suggestions. I'll go back to that. They were really good suggestions. I'll see if I can find it again. It creates backlinks back to your shop. This is such abstract thinking that so, because most people will create their shop and they'll put their products in it and they'll say, okay, I'm ready to make some sales. Like I just had a, a friend start an Etsy shop and she, you know, she made her shop and she posted it on Facebook. Hey, I decided to make an Etsy shop. Here it is. And then they, they create that Etsy shop and then they wait. And then nothing, you know, in most cases, nothing happens when you just do that, you know, especially if you don't know anything about SEO, if you just create that shop and there it is, but you have all of these branches, like you've got your tree, like the actual, the, the trunk of the tree is the, is the shop, but then you have all these external, actually, you know what? The trunk of the tree is your website and Etsy is one of the branches. And then when people go to your Etsy shop, they buy a product and then you send them a message asking for their email in exchange for a small refund, which was one of the previous tips. If you guys missed it, be sure to watch the replay. So you they get on your email list either by doing that or joining based on your inserts that you put in your packages or in the listings where you shout out your email list. And then when they make their next purchase, they purchase from your website. So you're not, you know, worrying about Etsy fees, but then you have all these other links. You have your social media, you have, you know, these suggestions on Pinterest where you're solving another problem. You have all these upsells incorporated where people can add a hat, people can add balloons, people can add, you know, all these, all these things to their portrait. People can have you write the, the message directly in their card and they can pay a little extra for that. Like, do you realize how crazy all of like when when we say it like this, does it sound crazy to you? Like how absolutely ingenious it is that you have created this? Like that was the thing that I mentioned in the the alpha community was when you look at your partner and you go, I have a great idea. And he goes, Go on then hit me. And I tell him, How many times when you're writing a card do you not know what to write? How good would it be if you went on a website and it said Stuck on what to write inside. I can not only write your gift message for you, but I can also suggest what to write. He's like, that's genius. That's genius. Because that's solving a real world problem and not your product doesn't have to solve the problem. Something else you offer could solve the problem. And that's what I was trying to think is, oh yeah, but my stuff doesn't solve a problem. I don't, I don't understand the, it needs to fix something. It needs to solve an issue that's a real world issue. I don't know what to do. But then I went, but there is an issue with people not being able to write gift messages in their cards. I mean, I'm stuck when I go to write a card, but I've now put the research in and, and tried to find not only suggestions for people to people, I've also found suggestions for when people want to send a card from the dog to people. Which is probably very, like, that is a very, um, not not just profitable niche, but I bet it's very unique because I doubt a lot of people do that. Mm -hmm. Probably not. It's probably very rare. 
they might even buy the card regardless of what's on the front just because they can have a handwritten message inside it's more personal when you receive a card from Moonpig, you're like, well, the front cover is really personal because it's got photos and stuff of me and my friend. And it says happy 30th birthday or whatever. But inside, it's really impersonal because it's printed. No one really took the care to write it. And nothing is handwritten these days. Everything is digital. So how nice is it to receive something that's handwritten? And handwritten very nicely in gold. Yeah. <laughs> Which That's was another one of my branding colors. Yes. So <laughs> in all those subtle elements. Um, so your last tip, you didn't uh, you didn't explain it to me nope. because you put at the end, she sent me the email, like the big list of the tips. And then tip number 10, she just puts, I'll explain. Ah, ha, 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 ha. So, <laughs> <laughs> would you like to explain your final tip and then we'll probably run over time today by a little bit guys because i know that you have questions for amber normally we try to keep it at an hour but this is this has been such a great q a that i don't want to cut off and not let you guys ask questions so uh last tip and then i promise we'll get to your questions if you'd like to go ahead and start getting them in the chat now that would be helpful so tip number 10 amber there is a little tiny Japanese lady called Marie Kondo. And she goes into people's houses. This is, she has a Netflix series. She goes into people's houses and she teaches them how to declutter their life by picking things up. And if they give you joy, you keep them. If they do not spark joy, you thank it for its service and you put it in a charity bag. I thought, why? Don't I try this with my business? I pick up my inserts. Does this bring me joy? It really, really does. There's a joke on it. It's really personal. It feels nice. I put it in the keep pile. My key rings, I picked it up and I went, does this bring me joy? It really doesn't. I don't want to sell them anymore. I don't know why I sell them. Why do I sell them? They sell every now and then, but they don't. No. And I put it down and I deleted the listing and it felt so good. It felt so good to remove the possibility that someone else might order another one of those products. I hate making, I hate the end result. I hate packaging them. They're really heavy. I don't know why people want them on the keys. I don't know why I offer them. Why am I still offering them? Delete. Oh, I felt so good. <laughs> why not apply that logic that why are you making things that you hate regardless of whether they fit with your brand if you don't enjoy making them if you don't enjoy every step of the process why are your customers going to love them as much as you you can't expect someone to receive it in the post if you had some form of hatred whilst making it and i really have started doing that with everything and not just with my products but the things I keep in my studio, I'm like, well, this guillotine doesn't work. Why have I got it? Oh, oh I'm keeping it because it's, it's kind of useful. It's really not. It's not useful. Why am I keeping it? Send it to somebody else. Somebody else can have it and they can have joy from this thing. And I have cleared out so much stuff and I can move because I've not got stock I hate. I've not got designs I hate. I put them in my clearance section and made money from the ones that were sat in my drawer gathering dust because I hated them because I didn't want to show them to anybody. Put them up on Etsy, put them on clearance. I sold them for maybe less than it cost me to make them, but I never have to see them again. And it feels so good because like, not only someone wants something I hate, but I never have to look at it again. Seriously, start looking at your business as you are going to do this job hopefully for the rest of your life it's not just for the next month it's not just for the next year for the rest of your life why not enjoy every single aspect of it right down to the bare bones of how you write your emails how you receive orders does your website bring you joy or does it cause you absolute havoc every time someone orders something and you have to go right great they couldn't attach a photo to the form because that's not an option on Squarespace. What could I do? I joined her uh, uh, architect and I've created a website from scratch that does exactly what I need, exactly how I need it done. 
and it brings you joy because when you get a sale, you don't just get a I cool, cool card sale. I know that that sounds really big headed, but I'm like, I've got card sale and I don't have to do anything myself to further this sale. It's already done. I just need to press print label. Before I had to copy and paste the address, then go into click and drop, then put it on my postage labels. I hated every single order I did because the posting was just horrible. But on my new website, it does it all for me. I don't know why I didn't start that sooner. Maybe because Renee only releases it once a year, but I'm glad <laughs> I did. <laughs> you, were, you were busy with Handmade Alpha Academy and then I was like, oh, and if, if you guys want to get even more sales, I also recommend checking this out and you did and i'm looking at your like i'm looking if you see me smiling like just an idiot over here in your tiny little preview screen amber it's because for the first time i'm seeing the do you have a blank design and seeing if i'm just watching it do you have a chow chow design and then it repopulates and deletes do you have a Springer design That's and I've, I've never seen that before. Guys, go down into like right now, I want all of you to do it in a separate <laughs> tab, don't close us out, but in a separate tab, go click show more under this video and click open Amber's website, not her Etsy shop, but click open her website, like right click, open in a new tab and watch how that populates. That is absolutely amazing. I love it. And you're answering, you're, you're kind of turning around their common questions. You know exactly what they're going to ask and they see it there and they're like, oh, of course she does because she's acknowledging it. Yeah. So that's great. Um, Amber, <laughs> do you want to answer some alpha questions? Play for it. We have a lot. Um, let's see. I actually have an answer for that one. Oh, well, yeah, I do too. Melissa asks, getting here late. Um, sorry if already asked, but if a customer posts a photo with their review on Etsy, is it okay for me to share a screenshot of that on Instagram or do I need permission first? Listen, it will, you can, you technically, technically by law, will you get in trouble for doing it? No. No, it's public domain. But why wouldn't you ask? What if they don't want you to? How would how would you feel if someone took something that you you know something that you posted and you you weren't really comfortable with the whole world seeing it, and they took that and they screenshotted it and they posted it everywhere? Just ask. Like Just, it's, if, it's if good it practice. looks if it looks like it. So if, if it's something somebody's wearing. Definitely ask if you're going to include their name. Definitely ask if it's just a picture of your product on a table. It's probably okay. Yeah. But if it's going to show anything that resembles the person that bought it, including their name or their likeness, you should definitely be asking. It doesn't hurt to ask. I mean, no. if they don't, and if they don't want you to, they they probably would have gotten upset that you did it anyway. So just just ask. It doesn't take anything yeah. to ask. Amber, do you ever share reviews from from customers? No. No, um, <laughs> well, you don't need to that post for you. <laughs> yeah, but I do take keywords from what they say. So like um, long tail keywords as well of their reviews and almost do it like um, the independent newspaper says and then put the quotation mark. It's kind of like that, but I'm not mentioning any names. Photos are always good. Photos are useful because I asked them to share to my page themselves and then you just they send, me, they send me a photo in a message and i'm like oh my god that's such a lovely photo of your dog next to the card that looks like their dog and um i said well, would you be able to post it on my page my, my fans would love that and they do and people go oh that's lovely doesn't it look the same you sure it's not that dog and i'm like no it's not it's somebody else's dog but okay <laughs> starts a discussion with them why not ask them because they go i absolutely loved it i really did and they might say more than what they wrote in the review because you have a certain amount of characters and time to write a review i've never reviewed anything on etsy aren't i a bad seller um i've never <laughs> reviewed anything on etsy because once i've received it i'm like oh well, this is great and i would tell the seller if it wasn't great that is my level of interaction but if they messaged me and said I'm really concerned that you haven't got it yet or anything because the swipe files exist for us. It's great. When it doesn't exist on the other end where you're a buyer, it you're not going to leave a review because you forget that you're supposed to. 
Yeah. And it's not that you don't, for most people, it's not that you don't want to, it's not that you hated the product. It's not that you're like, Oh, I got what I wanted. I don't, I don't give a crap about, you know, leaving a review. You just forget like you got mm -hmm. the product. You're happy. You got your item. And then you totally forget to leave that review. I have I a follow up email from, I have a follow up email 10, 10 days after I have posted their portrait. It goes, what did you think of your portrait? I'm really intrigued to know. I'd love to see a picture of it framed up on the wall if you've got it framed already. Also, did you know that I scan every single portrait and now you can get X, Y, Z printed? Here's the link, give to the to the shop. And people go, oh, I don't have to write a review, but I could certainly like reply to that email and go like, oh, I absolutely loved it. Thank you so much. And that's all I need. I don't need a public review. I just want to know that they're happy with it. And that's where I stand is sometimes I don't even know that I have a review. I haven't ticked the notification thing. I'm really bad seller. <laughs> You're not a bad seller. You're not focused on the on the small stuff you're focused on the large scale and you're focused on what matters their satisfaction and whether that satisfaction comes as because i think a lot of people will get that that great message where the person is so thankful to them and they'll say man this is great but i really wish that they would have put it in a review and then they're not they don't allow themselves to feel the full gratitude from that customer because they're so upset that the customer didn't put it in a review Mm -hmm. Who cares? Like, enjoy that feeling. Someone really loves what you're doing and they might come back again and again. You know, that don't don't just focus on those numbers. That's that's not as important as how you made that customer feel. That's why you're here. So. Um, all right. Let's see. Amber, we have a couple more questions. Stephanie asks, do you think it's OK to invite them to your mailing list if your niche is a one time thing? For example, flower girl dresses. I'm developing more products, but for now it's only a good use for one time. So inviting them to your mailing list, if it's a, you know, a one time product. Amber, I'll let you answer and then I'll, I'll give my two cents. Yeah, Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, or, or I'll take it. <laughs> um, I would, it's for the wedding industry. So it's a flat, flat for flower girl outfits. I would go into wedding groups because I know that women start planning their weddings way before the man's even proposed. Oh, yeah. Sometimes before they even have a man lined yeah. up. <laughs> so what I would do is use Pinterest because the amount of time I spent making Pinterest boards for everything is that I would have an image of your flower girl dresses, put as many up as you possibly can, create a little like sort of world where you would have vintage wedding, rustic wedding, farmhouse wedding. You can create so many different boards. Teal and gold wedding is what I made my board as because those are my colors. And then instead of having a link back to your shop, you could always put your mailing list in the Pinterest because you go, you click on read it. If it's got information on if it's got more more photos on than just the one photo that you've clicked on the thumbnail you will click read more and it could take you to your website it could take you to your etsy shop but it needs to be not salesy because i'm not in a buying mood when i'm on pinterest i'm in a browsing making my mood board mood and um i would join a mailing list because i'm not ready to buy yet but as soon as you send me an email i will be because I'll be a little bit closer to my wedding. I mean, flower girl dresses are right at the end of a wedding pr production. So you could put like a getting married soon, join my mailing list and, and, and receive a discount for my VIPs just for being a member. I mean, mailing lists are so undervalued <laughs> for the fact that you've got like a time sensitive sale. You put it up. And you immediately start getting sales because you've just sent an email. They get the email direct to them. They're not having to scroll through Facebook until they find your page. Pinterest for weddings. Yeah. <laughs> Pinterest is the best place for weddings because you can really, I mean, and here's the thing. People use Pinterest to create their dreams. And like Amber said, people are, you know, women in particular planning their weddings before they have, you know, 
a ring on their finger sometimes before they even have a man lined up. They, they're planning their dream weddings. And you can exist in their little Pinterest board indefinitely. And I know that it sucks that with weddings, you can't have those repeat products. But a few ways that you could counter this, Renee Christine just talked about this, I think, uh, day before yesterday, I believe, where um, The Knot, like the website, The Knot, where you can you know shop for weddings. After you purchase from The Knot, after your wedding, you get moved on to The Nest, which is another like a, a sub company of The Knot where it moves into like the home itself. And then from there, they also have one for like <coughs> for new baby, you know, so there are these sequences. So there are ways that you can grow out of just the, the wedding and not having those repeat buyers. But ultimately for the wedding industry in particular, what I would recommend and what you know, just like what Amber said, is to really focus on Pinterest and creating the overall feel of that brand and consider that you're going to exist in this person's mind for several months before they make that purchase, before their wedding, ex you know, even happens, possibly years. Keep yourself at the top of their mind. And, and one of the things you really have to consider with that too, you know, building an email list, even if it seems like a one-time thing, that person that you're selling the dresses to has brothers, sisters, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents, other people, friends, coworkers, college associates, all different kinds of people that might also be getting married and want a dress for their flower girl. And if you absolutely nail it with your product and all of your inserts and they remember who you are, that's more people for them to market too. So if you're still reminding them with an email list that you exist or that your products are still there for other people to use, there's, there's definitely a necessity to still have an email list. You can also find other sellers that you would personally recommend right. and create a an industry checklist and say, have you got your tiara yet? Here is an Etsy shop that I personally would recommend. And they would do the same for you because everybody sort of purchases their wedding items in a specific order, but at the same time, they're not ordered at the same time. You could create a, a timeline for, have you got your bouquets yet? Have you got your tiara yet? Have you got your wedding jewelry yet? Here are some other people that I would recommend and they could do it back to you as well. Yeah, or sign up for our mailing list and get, in return, get our free you know, wedding checklist. Yeah. And then it, it, with the checklist, do you have this? Here's where you can get it. Here's what we recommend. Oh, do you have this? Do you understand what this signifies? Do you have your something blue? You know, here's something, here's something blue that we recommend. Here's, a, here's these blue, you know, headbands that we recommend. Oh, here's the significance of wearing something blue on your, you know, there's a million ways to do it. And here's a fun fact, something blue for me on our wedding day, I didn't have something blue. So Beth, his mom's friend, gave me a blue phone case that I shoved in the back of my dress. So little, <laughs> did you know that? Yeah. Did you know I wore, I had a phone case in the back of my dress on our mm -hmm. wedding day? I wasn't sure if you knew that. Um, okay. Let's see. Trying to, we'll do lightning round of questions. Sound good? Yep. Lightning round. All right. When you manually add people to your mailing list, do you send them an email straight away? Do they have to confirm that they've given permission to be added? So for like, uh, GDPR. Um, so there is a tick box at the end. When you add a subscriber, there is a tick box and said, this person has given me permission, but there is also the double opt in to the mailing list anyway. So once you have added them, they will start to receive your welcome series. If you've got one set up, I don't have a particularly good welcome series. I have a, thank you for becoming a buddy. Here's your discount code. And then I have a, Oops, did you find me in your junk mail? Here's how to add me to your address book. And then a little bit about myself. Like, I don't want to find myself in your inbox without personally introducing myself kind of email. And I don't really know if they are still on my mailing list or if they've unsubscribed as soon as they get the discount. To me, it doesn't really matter because I still got the sale out of them. I still had that like positive interaction with them and they're still gonna get their card. And they might receive their card and go, well, oh, that was a bit of a mistake. Unsubscribe in there. But I know where to find her link again because I just need to go into my email list. I need to go into find my inbox and click on join again. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't know whether they have any different 
emails to the ones that join through my, my landing page, but I assume that it all works exactly the same because yeah. I do the same for in-person events. So when I do a big show, I have a little chip, like a sign up sheet that they put their email address and their first name on. And then at the end of the show, I go and add them manually. And that's a good way of building your list as well. Right. And, then, and sorry, I was reading a comment. <laughs> you caught me. Um, so basically guys with, with your mailing lists, we, I mean, like I said, in HA, we teach all this, but if somebody leaves your mailing list and one of the things that we teach in HA is don't get caught up if somebody unsubscribes, because yeah. if they unsubscribe, you know, that's great for you because it keeps your mailing list cheaper for longer. Amber, do you have a paid mailing list yet? Or are you still on free? No, I'm still on free. That's great. And you, and you clean it frequently, which I teach how to do on HAA to keep those numbers below 2000, you clean people um, who don't open anything, right? Yeah. You, you kick them it's out. Under, it's under a thousand at the moment. And that's just like under a year. I started it in June last year. So yeah. 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 And, and, if you, and if you continue to clean your your mailing list and you get to a point where it is a paid membership, you can you'll be able to afford to pay. Yeah, like, exactly. For like five dollars for the extra five hundred people. Right. So, guys, just keep your mailing lists clean and don't worry about when people unsubscribe. In HAA, I teach everybody to not even turn on those notifications no. to see when people unsubscribe because it's not important. No, nope. you should be Doesn't happy. Matter. Be happy when people unsubscribe. They weren't interested They're in dead weight. Yeah. Dead weight. They weren't interested in your products anyway. Um, all right. So let's see. Aisha, I wanted to create a clearance uh, section on Etsy. I have materials and products that don't fit my branding or even what I'll be selling. How do I do this without muddying up my main shop? Create a new shop? No. Don't create a new shop just so you can get rid of crap that you can't sell. Like that's, <laughs> that's very time consuming and not worth your time. Um, I would give it a test period in your own shop and try to sell it. And if it doesn't sell during that test period, it might be a good indication that nobody wants the products anyway, in which case you could give them as freebies in your current packages. You could give them to friends, family, um, you know, you could sell them on a Facebook yard sale page if they don't fit your branding. You have to think about the future. What, what do you want your brand to be? Don't think about, oh, I've got, don't put energy into these little individual products that you're not going to sell in the long run anyway. Think it's, about your, if it's a waste of time, it's yeah. a waste of time. Give it a shot, put it in your D stash or your clearance section on your, on your, uh, Etsy. If it doesn't work, then get rid of it, get rid of it. Yeah. You got to think about the, the longevity of your brand as a whole, your brand is its own entity. What are you going to feed into your brand? That's going to create, you know, this, this massive like alpha brand, like, like we say in HAA, what are you going to do to make the perception of this brand the best that it can possibly be? And having these products that don't fit your brand image or what you plan to sell in there just for the sake of trying to get, yep. you know, a few pennies out of them, get those pennies elsewhere, sell those products somewhere else. By removing those products, you might actually increase your genuine sales for the brand that you want to promote and what you want your brand to be. So there's my little bit of um, advice on there. Um, let's see. Okay, here's one for Amber. For printed products, do you have a stock on hand or do you get things printed per order? So do you use like a POD? <laughs> what do you have on hand and what do you what do you uh, like service out for printing? Um, so I have cards. Um, I have my most popular range, um, which is what I have in stock. So every time I do an Etsy sale, I go to my wall, I pick it up and I post it. That's my cards. I've got bookmarks over here. I've got gift bags. I've got wrapping paper. Um, but anything big and bulky, like the cushions and the mugs and stuff, I send that to my supplier. They have the blanks ready to go. And they print it and then they send it. So it's like a drop ship for them because I wouldn't have the space. Um, I am moving house, um, buying See? a house. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> it's a really scary thing. Um, and I will have more space. So hopefully I will be able to have more stock up on the walls. Um, but I would try and keep your stock to a minimum because if it's not selling, you're using the space up for something that would sell. These cards, I sell out so fast. I mean, I have put in some cards to pretend I don't have blank spaces. Because <laughs> there are empty ones today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. Um, 
Now, Brighton Pip asked, am I correct that we aren't allowed to contact an Etsy customer after a sale? No, you can send a transactional message after a sale. That message has to, the focus of that message has to be the transaction itself. You can't message them six months after the sale and say, join my email list. But what you can do is say, hey, I just want to let you know that I received your order or I just want to let you know that I just shipped your order. Hey, for your next purchase, you can get uh, 30% off if you join my mailing yep. list. No pressure, but you know, here it is. So add that as kind of like the PS where the focus of the message was that you ship their order, you receive their order. Hey, did you, did you, re did you receive your order? I hope you loved it. Uh, by the way, if you ever decide to order again, I want to make sure that you get the best deal since you've already purchased from me in the past get, you know, 30% off in your next order by joining my mailing list. So you can contact the customer. Just make sure that the, the premise and the purpose of that message is uh, transactional. Transactional conversation is pretty much customary everywhere in the world. So Etsy, Etsy wouldn't do that. Um, we had, uh, where'd it go? Oh, what email service do you personally use? Amber, since this is covered in HAA, but I know you know the answer. MailChimp. Mailchimp, do you post love? Monkey. Do you love Post Monkey? Do you love Mailchimp? I do. Um, the one thing that I would say is it, it also follows my sense of humor. It's got really stupid jokes in it. <laughs> the little I monkey and the bananas. <laughs> and the um, it's quite fun to use. Um, it's not so daunting as some of the other mailing lists are, where you get and then you're like, great, now what? I don't. Like, here, let's try and send your first campaign. Success, it's been sent to your 500 subscribers. And then it's you get a really, monkey high five. Yeah, it's really cheery. So you go, oh, cool, it's, it's worked, it's positive, it's, it's fun. So you don't feel it's so annoying to send that mail email to people. Like I do feel like sometimes companies really do spam. And when I get an email after email after email, my thought isn't, oh, I can't wait to buy this thing. It's unsubscribe. So MailChimp makes that a little bit more exciting that you're not sending spam. You're quite excited by it. You send in the email. You're like, yeah, I can't wait to send this because it's fun. It is fun. And guys, if you receive any emails from me, from the, uh, from, you know, Starla, from my email list for the alphas, you'll see exactly what those emails, you know, can look like all the possibilities. I keep mine very simple. We teach why you should keep them simple and how to keep them simple and how to, you know, avoid them going into spam in HAA. Um, but ultimately MailChimp makes it really, really easy. And they had a lot of changes recently that some people are freaking out about guys, MailChimp's a business and they have to make money. And for them to provide an amazing service for free for up to 2000 members, they do have to have a paid service. You know, you can't, you for can't, sure. you can't, I mean, they are a powerful platform sending literally millions and millions of emails out. So you have to consider that they're a business and complying and they, with every country's laws. The laws exactly. are different everywhere. So you gotta, I mean, GDPR was, that came out of freaking nowhere. Yeah, <laughs> so it did, and it was scary. So you gotta love. You have to love Mailchimp. And they, a couple of months ago, they sent socks to like I think just a ton of their uh, a ton of their users. Like they actually sent to the address that you, the physical address that you have to put for your whether that's a PO box or your address on your on your um, emails. They sent socks, monkey the the Mailchimp monkey's name is freddy by the way they sent freddy socks to a bunch of people so if you got freddy socks let me know in the comments um all right so let's go ahead and answer our last question from jane i think that this is a really great closing question because it has to do with haa which always i get excited to hear amber talk because i want to know i want to know if what i what you know what i invested all that time into i want to know how it helps people that way i can keep doing the right thing but jane asked amber how fast did your business grow after going through haa and i think jane um jane are you the one who did you email me today or you're one of the ones who, who's considering joining uh haa i believe let me know if i'm wrong but amber go right on ahead um, so since I joined AHAA, I have been asked three times to be in the leading magazine for my niche. Woo! They asked me. I didn't push them. They, they came to me. And the third time was like last night. 
Um, and she said, sorry to come back again, but would you be interested in being featured again? If so, I need X, Y, and Z. That would have never happened without HAA. I have no idea whether that impacted my sales, but it's definitely getting me out there. And I don't think I would have done that without HAA. I wouldn't have been starting to be put into features and magazines and stuff. Dogs today, um, right? Is that yeah. the um, I've got some stats as well. So last year, since I started, because I opened my shop, I made £1,280.66 on Etsy. So I paid for HAA just with my Etsy sales and I started from nothing. So I paid off HAA just with my Etsy sales, right? This year, I've made £886, right? 227 orders in total. But the last 30 days, that was 124 orders and 422 pounds. So I have made half of what I've made in the past six months in the past 30 days. That because is- I've implemented my top tips. So what's, so I know that you've been talking a lot about the changes that you're making in your life. So as a result of this growth, what, what freedoms have you been granted? Like what, what's your life look like now and what have you been able to do with this extra income and time, like on a personal note? So um, in the next month, uh, we're buying a house. Uh, yeah. We weren't looking for a house. Um, we were coming back from our wedding interview because we're getting married in October. Yeah. Um, back from our wedding interview and we were hungry. It was 10 o'clock at night. We went to a takeaway and we sat there and we went, and went for a newspaper whilst we were waiting for our food to cook. And there was an advert for a house and we went to go and see it the next day and we put in an offer the next day. That was amazing. I don't know how it happened, but we're buying a house. And that moment with my accountant and the mortgage advisors and everything is a very scary process. And to suddenly learn that actually they only take in your net profit was a terrifying moment because I was like, <laughs> oh, so I thought that my 36 pound thousand pounds of revenue last year regardless of what i made last year you will only take my net profit okay so i had to go and like reboot everything again and go through my account and, and it was so many different phone calls but yeah it's happening and i never thought that that would have happened and it wouldn't have happened because of what my net profit would have been last year because of HLA, my net profit has gone up. That is absolutely awesome. awesome. Ah! And for the house, we have to put, so in the UK, I don't know whether it's the same in um, the US, but they give first time buyers a 5% deposit offer rather than 10% of the house, 5%. We weren't eligible for that because I'm self-employed. So we have to put £25,000 of a deposit towards our house. Oh boy. Ooh. So we found 25,000 like that. That's amazing. In a week. Oh my God, in a week? In a, in a week. Because we didn't know we were moving. That's great. Yeah, and uh, Lindsay just asked, a house with a big art studio? <laughs> um, it's got a big, big second bedroom and a huge garden. And um, we were discussing having an art studio at the bottom, like a summer house. So I could have an open studio and customers can come and visit, bring their dogs with them. But uh, I think I'm gonna be too big by the time I can afford a summer house at the bottom of the garden. I think I'm gonna need an office because the amount of posts that I'm sending out every day and the amount of phone calls I'm taking every day and the amount of space I need now in five years time, I won't fit in a summer house. <laughs> <laughs> Yalissa, Yalissa wants you to show pictures to post some pictures when you uh, yeah. when you get finished setting it up. Yeah, like, we'll it. yeah, both groups, both public yeah. and and academy oh. groups. We all. I bought want... this with HAA. <laughs> <laughs> like this is what I bought. Yeah, <laughs> that's the best testimonial in the whole world. Like, here's my house. <laughs> all right. Well, let's see. It is one thirty on the dot. Yeah. Amber, do you have any final words for the alphas before we? Say goodbye for the weekend. If you're scared, why not go for it? Because fear is the first, one of the first lessons that you teach is that it's okay to be afraid of things because it's our brain telling us, or oh, something went wrong last time I did this. 
you've never done this before. You've never done a course where you will definitely double your money within the first month. Because I not only used it with Etsy, I used it on my website. Every single thing that I learned from HA is applicable for the rest of my life. Because it's a mindset, not a load of lessons to teach you exactly step by step what to do and then just leave you. It's teaching you a mindset so that you can apply it to your relationship, to your family, to your uh, outlook on when you go outside and see people. You can be an alpha in so many other aspects than just your business. And I can't tell you how important it is to just try because you never know what can, might come out of it. I, If I looked at myself this year and last year before I joined HAA, and I told myself I would be buying a house and I would be getting married and I would be doing a live video with Starla for the second time. <laughs> I would have made £36,000 in revenue last year and definitely on track to make more this year, making 115 pa uh, sales every month, making £400 a month on Etsy, my sideline shop. I would not have believed you. Because I was thinking, all I was thinking in my head was, yeah, but, yeah, but it's a thousand pounds, this course is that it's a thousand pounds. I don't have a thousand pounds. You will. You will have a thousand pounds. You have a thousand pounds spare every month. Do it. You won't regret it. Oh my God. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm redder than the kit because the camera makes me so red already. And I'm already like getting even redder. Oh my goodness. Guys. Thank you for hanging out with us today, Amber. Thank you so much. I don't even know what to freaking say. Um, <laughs> HA is, I will say that HA is not just, it's not just an Etsy course. Mm -hmm. There is, there is passion, there is heart, there is soul. And there is really, if you find yourself where, you know, you're in a position where you really don't understand your role as that business owner, and you really want to work on your psychology as well. That's what HA is all about. It is a, Etsy course, but it is also a psychology and neuroscience course that will snap you into our alpha mindset. So Amber is probably the very best example of this. This is why you guys, the alpha community voted her alpha of the year for 2019. This is why we sent her all of her goodies and all of her love and her award. We love Amber to death. Amber, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. <laughs> guys need to go down below this video, open up the description, look at Amber's shop, look at her Etsy shop, look at her website, join her mailing list, visit her on social media, go see why Amber is as successful as she is and really just adopt the 10 tips that she gave you today. So and Amber, use the discount code alpha for 30% off of everything for life. You can use it as many times as you want. And oh. that's more than my VIPs alpha guys use code alpha for life for how much off 30 percent. that's crazy 30 percent for life from amber on etsy and the website yeah help her out go to her website I mean, <laughs> as much as we love etsy guys go help amber out go to her website so she doesn't sacrifice any of the pennies to the etsy fees thank you guys so much for hanging out and amber you stay on the line and uh we'll talk to you for a minute sound good yeah. All right, guys. Waiting Have a great what? Waiting list. What about? Get them to join the waiting list. You oh, and join that. the waiting list for <laughs> Amber Alpha Academy. That's down below. First email for the waiting list should have went out at noon today. Um, but if you guys join, you'll be getting almost like a countdown for HAA and some additional tips about HAA. And even if you're not on that waiting list, if you're on my email list in general, you will also get the invitation. The huge discount. Amber, how huge is the discount? Don't say what it is, but how huge is it and how badly do they need to be on the list? It, it, it's big and you will regret it if you don't join now because you'll have to wait till Christmas. And then when Christmas comes, you won't have time to edit your shop because you'll be crazy with black friday mm -hmm. crazy with christmas sales do it now do it during the holidays when no one's really buying and you'll be ready for christmas and you'll reap the rewards seriously yes. exactly like paula making 19 000. i'm not i can't like advertise <laughs> i can't say you guys will make nineteen thousand dollars on black friday like paula because paula's just crazy paula from clean and dirty but we will help you get yourself in shape for the holidays 
and it's going to be a blast. And I'm going to be with you every step of the way. And Amber is going to be there. And Yalissa, who's in the chat, is going to be there. And who? And Lindsay, who's in the chat, is going to be there. And we're all going to be there for you. So, guys, have a great weekend. Thanks for hanging out. And we will see you next Friday. Bye.